Nick Robinson here for Polygon, and today an update comes out for one of my favorite games of 2016, Thumper, the rhythm, violence, nightmare, beetle, hellscape rhythm game uh, that came out on PS4 and PC via Steam last month. Uh, I recently uh, took some time to talk to Mark Flurry, who is one of the two-man development team on Thumper, about what's in this update. Uh, we actually talk about a lot of things, including what it's like making a game... Uh, on a two-person team when he's located in South Korea and his co-developer Brian Gibson is located in the United States. Uh, we talk about uh, how they postponed the release of this update uh, because of the United States presidential election outcome. Uh, we talk about a lot of stuff. So without further ado, uh, I'll just let the game footage roll. And yeah, here's my, my conversation with Mark. Enjoy. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk to you about kind of the new stuff. I hopped in and I, I played the first level and I, I think I have a rough sense of what this this new content is based on that but i guess i, I want to hear it in your words what's what is the thumper play plus patch sure so it's a pretty subtle change i mean the game's only been out for like less than a month now but um it's in a sense it's kind of like the director's cut of the game where mm. we you know the tutorials are out because it's this it's this mode to kind of assume for you know more advanced players so that you play the same levels but there's We've removed the tutorial sections, or you know, any section that kind of is introducing the mechanics that we thought would kind of slow down the flow of the game. We've removed from the levels, so it's just a, it's just a couple spots, and not every. And most levels are the same, um, but yeah, you play as the, the golden beetle, and you can now go up to a four x multiplier. And when you hit the three x or the four x multiplier, you start going faster. And the other major change is just that you have one life to try to beat the whole level. Right. And if you die before the end of the level, you get like a partial score. But in a, in a way, it just feels more like a classic arcade game to us this way, which is kind of a big inspiration for the game. And, you know, modern sensibilities, you, you know, you couldn't get away with making a game like this. Right. So that's why we made it into like a separate mode for people who like this kind of challenge. And... Um, yeah, even if you can't beat the level, I still think it's pretty fun uh, mm. to try to get a high score. And yeah, uh, I mean, my first my first stab at it was level one one plus, and my high score at the end of it was like S S plus S plus S plus S S plus S plus, and then I died once, and it was just it <laughs> over. Like you basically <laughs> have added permadeath to Thumper in a way, right? Um, which is add something pretty brutal to an already brutal game. But it's funny you mentioned like it being a little more arcadey now. Uh, in, if you think, like, it's something that I... Thumper has gotten... Uh, it's pretty widely considered to be a super hard game, and I think it is, but it's also pretty generous with how, like, lives work. Do you know what I mean? Like, honestly, yeah. the, the only thing that will... The only permanent roadblock in Thumper is your patience, I think, because you can just keep trying over and over, and it even saves your checkpoints. Uh, is this, like... Was, was there ever a time when... I actually, I think I remember playing Thumper like a couple GDCs ago and there was a finite number of lives. Like I had three lives and then three strikes and you're out. Is that how it worked at one point? It did at one point. Yeah, we had lives and we just weren't really sure what was best to do for a long time. And I do think that the way that the, the current game, I like how the current game works because it's, it's super hard and demanding, but it's not really punishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might, I, I, you know, I think there's something about rhythm games in general that are just inherently frustrating. Like... Because you know exactly what you're supposed to do, and when you can't totally. do it, it, it's a feeling of frustration. There's a, the gap between what you what you want to be doing with the controller and what is happening with the controller is is very, I guess, n uh, narrow. Because you, you, it's not like it's not like a puzzle game where you're trying to figure something out. You know what you're trying to do. It's just execution. Right. 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 And, and yeah, I think a lot about Thumper is just like you know how far can we push you on this on just a few simple axes. You know, like how far can we push rhythm gaming and and so I think that the yeah the main mode just like kind of like slowly trains you to become an expert in the game, and then I think this mode is just like a, a, another way to kind of ramp up the tension again. So uh, kind of on the subject of difficult, I guess this is a different kind of difficulty, but uh, I think a lot of Thumper players, myself included, um, w came out of that first 48 hours of Thumper with like a mild thumb strain injury. Uh, which y'all have y'all have basically patched out of the game by allowing you to use uh, the triggers or A to to hit uh, enemies, right? Right. Right. Um, did you, well, I guess I'm, something I'm curious about is like, did the fact that people were hurting their thumbs surprise you? Did that happen to you during development, or what, like was that complete a complete shock, or was it kind of expected? Uh, 
No, it wasn't expected at all, really. I mean, I mean, of course, we kind of made fun of it, but I mean, like honestly, if anyone seriously hurt themselves, that would not be cool. But right. I think most people just, you know, pushed themselves too hard and had some discomfort in their thumb. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's funny because I, I think it's just like if you set someone down in front of a drum set and tell them to play really fast for a while, like they're going to cause pain on themselves because they're not experienced in how to like use those muscles efficiently. Right. And, I mean, I, you know, I didn't even really understand that thumper was that hard i thought it was too easy for a long time because you know after seven years of playing the same thing like i got really comfortable with it and like you know i, I never like feel really any like difficulty to, you know too, too too intense and like i think i just had always just been relaxed whenever i played it so mm-hmm. i never heard that. well i mean that's <laughs> that's the funny thing about it is that like in terms of the number of inputs in terms of your like apms in thumper like the number of buttons you're pressing per per second or minute in Thumper, I don't think is is greater than any other video game. I, I think a lot of the, the thumb injury that players, myself included, have experienced comes from the fact that we're not just hitting the A button or the X button, we're hitting it extremely hard with a lot of force yeah. and a lot of intensity because the game we're playing is like, it's it's weird, it's like this atmospherically we're being encouraged to, to really press the hell out of that button, um, which is interesting, I think. Yeah, totally. I think you're right. I mean, I bet like a game like God of War or something, you're probably hitting the button way more frequently. Mm-hmm. How's the how's the response to the game been so far? Do you have a good sense of like how how? Because I know y'all worked on this game. What's the final total of years you worked on? Is it seven years? It is seven, but uh, it's not exactly. It wasn't like seven full time years, and it kind of ramped up and down. Mm. Um, but for for the past five years, I've been in Korea, and it's been my main focus. And um, it just took a long time, you know, mostly because we had to learn so much. It was like kind of our first game, really. I remember talking to you at um, maybe this was GDC 2016 about VR. Actually, I think it was uh, Brian I was talking to who said that uh, like optimizing for PSVR was like was surprisingly easy with this game because the game is like even though it's really visually intense it's not the most demanding game and i've i've found that that like that's been reflected in my experience like it just runs so beautifully on pretty much any pc i've seen it on uh like was that was that something that i mean you guys this isn't running on like a a, any anything but a proprietary engine of y'all's right like this is something you made from the ground up yeah um it is and i think that i mean that was part of our advantage um the fact that we were able to get it on VR so fast and the like you know I, I'm right now I'm talking to you on my like 2011 MacBook Pro and I kind <laughs> of always tried to make sure that would run on this thing yeah kind of my minimum spec and it does so that that was part of it and, and you know we started you know from scratch which meant we couldn't like overload the game with particle systems and stuff that we don't have so um, I think that we just tried to stay on top of performance and then I mean, what we did, you know, we took a game that was 2D 60 frames per second, like not even rock solid 60 frames per second, and made it into a VR 90 frames per second game. Right. And that was like, I mean, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done, but I, it wouldn't have been impossible probably with some, if we had started with something like Unity. Um, right. Just because just there's less we can go under the hood and change. <laughs> I guess it's easy for Brian to say because his responsibilities were were mostly on the on the musical side, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he was he was like, oh, he's like, honestly, like we we only had a few months to do it, but if we had had more time, I think I think he could have gotten it to run natively 120. But I guess when you're the person who has to implement that, it's not as it's easier said than done. No, I mean he's he, he's right. I mean, and you know, like I'm not I'm not like you know I'm not Tim Sweeney or John Carmack or something. You know, like yeah. Uh, there's a lot of performance gains that I did not have time to do. So I mean, it's totally possible to, to to make it faster. But yeah, I think as a small team, like it's it's overwhelming to make your own engine. But then you also have a lot of flexibility, which is cool because we can yeah. really make it do exactly what the game needs and, and nothing else. That's awesome. Um, so, I guess speaking of performance, y'all have a PS4 Pro patch uh, for yeah. Thumper. Yeah. Um, what are what's what's different in that? Is it like uh, is it just performance boost? I think it's a you guys are running like same frame rate but at higher native resolution on the PS4 Pro. Yeah. So if you're not in VR, it's a native 4K, which is basically the main upgrade. Jeez. And then if you are playing PSVR with PlayStation Pro, so yeah, basically, like, when to get VR images to look better, what you do is, like, you render it bigger than the size of the screen inside the VR. 
mm-hmm. and it gets like it's called super sampling because especially because the way VR lens distortion works, it means the center of the image gets kind of stretched out and pixelated. Hmm. So you render it you render it bigger so that there's more pixels in the center of the screen. You maybe scale it down as part of the uh, the distortion that happens. So on PSVR, we we were able to do more super super sampling, and we're also able to improve the anti-aliasing to also make it just it just it looks like clearer and smoother. Basically. Huh. Yep. Right now, you, actually, you you mentioned your original plan was to put it out uh, yesterday. Yeah. But you decided to maybe postpone because our entire nation is in mourning. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, for personally, it just felt a little uh, disingenuous to, to sound to try to sound enthusiastic about something uh, about our video game, you know. Totally. <laughs> it just didn't seem like the right tone. Um, How has it been as a as someone who lived in America and then moved to to Seoul? Like you said, five years ago, right? Yeah. What has it been like experiencing that like remotely from South Korea? Well, you know, I mean, I'm totally on top of. Uh, uh, U.S. news because of you know internet and stuff, um, mm-hmm. and so I feel very connected to my country still. And um, actually, my we're gonna have a my wife and I are having a baby like in May, and in a sense, it's like oh, I guess it's nice that I don't have to raise the kid in America if I don't want to. But mm-hmm. but but actually, it's one of the few times I actually felt kind of homesick because I was like oh wow, there's a lot of work to do, and I feel like a lot of pain from this, and I kind of wish I were there, uh, you know. So, yeah. so it's, weird. it's a weird feeling for sure. It, I, I can imagine. I guess also, like, in a way, Thumper is such a uh, viscerally upsetting, violent game. And I think <laughs> we probably had enough of that, like, psychological <laughs> torment yesterday that more Thumper was maybe... Of all the days of the year to add more Thumper, yesterday might not have been the right day to do it. So I, <laughs> I totally understand that, that decision. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, it's just a different universe for sure. <laughs> totally. I guess just I guess going back to to Thumper a little bit, like, uh, how what's it been like watching? I've noticed people have been going for like, uh, one hundred percent runs and and like speed run type stuff in Thumper. Have you gotten to see much of like the, the sort of high level Thumper play that's been happening? I've seen some of it, and actually we've talked to like, well, I mean, we're actually friends with uh, one of our best testers. Um, her name's Secret Cartoon Land on the leaderboard. She was she like she logged like hundreds of hours in the game before it was released, and it was big, really because of a lot of her feedback that the game was better, made better. And um, and then now there's this other guy Necronopticos that we've been talking with, and he like helped find like a really subtle control bug that I fixed already. And um, so yeah, that's actually been awesome. And I, I am a little surprised like how much people care about the S ranks and stuff. And we've actually done things like. There was this really frustrating thing that could happen where you'd miss the last thump in a section and then you would like lose your S string of S ranks potentially. So we made a way where you can like back up and replay that that checkpoint even if I'd you're past say, yeah. it. Yeah, that's I mean little quality of life changes like that I think are, are extremely huge. Having a button mapped now to just instantly restart a section if you're trying to go through an S rank the whole thing. Obviously you can't do that in Thumper uh, Play Plus, but uh, right. But I like stuff like that. I think is really it's something that hardcore music game folks I think tend to uh, appreciate. You call I noticed so Thumper is a game with very little on-screen text in it. Um, so I, I'm actually kind of curious to know like what the terminology that you and Brian use for for because you call the the notes that come down the highway thumps, right? Yeah, that's usually what Brian and I called it, and then we weren't sure if that's what. We should call. I mean, it's. I like how the game doesn't give names to anything because yeah. it, because it, it always just sort of makes it sound cheap or something to me. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, we call them thumps, and then, I mean, the internal names are really stupid. Like we call the, those bars that you have to slide through grindables because like we call that action grinding. Okay. And then the rings that you jump into used to be things that you had to like, like, fall. Like, you would be in the air, and then those things would hurt you, so you had to, like, duck under them, so we called them duckers. <laughs> gotcha. And then I guess the, the big the big uh, name, and I don't know if this is in the the final game anywhere, but uh, obviously the, the final boss of every level is Crackhead, right? Yeah, yeah. Is is that Does the word Crackhead show up in Thumper at any point, or is that, no. is that more external lore? Okay. Yeah, it's external lore. I guess we also on our website we have like a, a manual that shows. Those are the official terms of 
gameplay objects, I guess. It's like blue mm. bars and blue rings or something like that. So is do you do you feel like this this update, this Play Plus update is kind of the last big update to Thumper? Or, or do, I, do you guys have a sense of what what the future holds for for Drool and for for this game? Um uh, no, I don't. It won't be the last update. I don't think we have some other ideas that we are really pretty excited about. And this was actually something we didn't really think about until after <laughs> we released the game. And I mean, I guess there's always like this pressure as an indie developer. You don't want your game to be forgot about, so you kind of want um, to give people something to look forward to. So we thought, well, we can do this for now. And I mean, we're still obviously finishing up the PC VR support. Mm -hmm. and other stuff and so this is just like a small mode that we thought people would like um but yeah we have we're going to try to do some other kind of bigger stuff and um and then you know ultimately we don't want to work on thumper for years for sure uh so we want to do something new and if we ever do like a sequel like a like a really like you know, reimagining a game that might be a long time in the future because I think mm -hmm. we're excited to do something totally different next but that's your your goal though is for you and Brian to make another thing, right? Like you and Brian are not done working together. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the plan right now. Um, well, so I, we don't know exactly what that will mean. Like maybe mm -hmm. we'll work with some other people. And I mean, this was like a real crusade for us. Like we did it all by ourselves, and it was it was so hard and brutal, and like there was a lot of personal sacrifice. So I don't want to do it the same way again. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Why well, was it was it vindicating at all to see that like the game has just done so well critically like it i i think I, I it almost surprised me a little as someone who has been kind of following you guys for a couple years and like i, I love the game but i kind of had this weird feeling of like did they make this game just for me and no one else and it turns out the answer is no like people love thumper was it a pleasant surprise to see like the reviews roll in and have them be so so positive yeah for sure i mean it was a relief and it was like i mean we feel very fortunate by it because you know, we wanted to make something, you know, for ourselves, and we wanted other game developers to like it, our peers, and we wanted critics to like it, and we wanted players to like it, and we we seem to have succeeded to some degree in all of those goals, which is just like, you can't really plan on that, you just get lucky, and so I feel really fortunate about it, and I mean, even like, you know, there, there's some negative reviews, like actually quite negative, like bad scores, and that, reading those is really interesting to me too, because we knew we weren't making a game for everyone, mm -hmm. and that was never a goal, and, and I, I kind of feel like that means we probably did something right. The fact that there's some people that really like it and some people that have problems with it, I think is kind of interesting and, and maybe a good sign, too. <laughs> right. Would, I guess, would you find that preferable to just solid sixes across the board, like everyone is ambivalent about it? Yeah, yeah, much better than that. Like, for sure, we'd rather have something remarkable than something that's just you know, mediocre, because that's usually what happens with games, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, something I'm curious about too is that I get the sense that um, having to hit PSVR launch kind of gave you guys a deadline that you didn't have before when you were kind of just working on it at your own pace. Um, like how long do you think Thumper development would have kept going if, if you guys didn't have to have it out in time for, for PSVR? Or was that even a factor? Oh, it was for sure. And that, I mean, it's that's a great question. And I think, yeah, I mean, we, you know, when we decided to make that our deadline, it seemed like we had plenty of time. But then, of course, even no matter how long you work on a project, like a big project, you always run out of time at the end. And like the last two months, three months or four months, really, like up leading up to that, were really brutal. Like I was working like as hard as I could, like you know, causing like physical damage to my body, and like really sucked. And um, but I mean, I chose to do this, of course. So I'm not really complaining. But the the it was a good deadline for us, and I think it worked out in the end. And but yeah, in the future, like. You know, the, you knew about the game for a long time, but so few, few people did, and we felt like we really had to try to make this a time, investment of time worth it. So we needed to like hit hardware launches and launch simultaneously on Steam and PS4 and mm -hmm. do all this PR and everything. So, you know, I hope with the next game we'll try to be a little more relaxed and at least maybe, you know, adopt. I, I would love to just have it be beta tested for like at least a year, you know, before we actually release it and and just not have such a scramble if, if possible. But well, How do you, when you're like crunching on the last few months on a game and the only other developer on the game is on the other side of the planet, how do you motivate yourself to, to do that? Like, is it is it hard to crunch when you're alone like that? 
Um, I mean, it's definitely a weird feeling. Like, I remember there was a, a period in when my wife was in France, and uh, I was, like, at home alone for three weeks just working on the game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I went a little nuts. Like, I just remember I'd be walking around town, like, for lunch or something and, like, just talking to myself and not realizing it. But, you know, I don't know. It's it's It wasn't hard to motivate myself to work. I just It was just the stress, you know, and uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And, like, this thing was so important to me, and I wasn't really confident in, in it you know up until the very end that it was the hardest part about it i don't i like working i just like think that the stress and expectations are what gets really hard well uh mark thank you so much for for talking to me um i am a huge huge fan of the game obviously and uh it's, <laughs> it's just cool to hear you and it's cool that like there's more more content coming like this all this what i've played of of the uh the play plus stuff seems like it's very much like a just a gift for the people who who already love the game and want it yeah. to be harder like the the lunatics a- among us who like want thumper to be even harder like it's so so tailor-made for that group it feels like yeah i think so yeah yeah thanks for your time yeah thank you nick